So now we're going to look at rectifying a sheet uh, using Map Warper. So where we start off first actually is in a, a website called Mapcraft. And this site is what we're using to keep track of the progress of all the various different sheets and the links to each individual sheet in Map Warper. So uh, as with all other links, uh, the link to this is on the wiki page for this series, uh, which will be linked down below in the description. So first thing you're going to do when you get to Mapcraft is you're going to log in and this uses your OpenStreetMap login. So it'll pop open a new window there and just hit save changes, it'll log you in then. And we should see your username up in the top corner. So what you're looking for is uh, the uh, project called Tracking Progress of Irish Imagery Rectification. Very often it's located on the front page, if not it's usually on the second or third page of this website because it's updated uh, pretty often. So you click into that, it'll open up in a new window here behind. And just once this loads here now. So uh, the sheet we're going to be doing is the Castle Re sheet. And it's, if I'm right, this is Cassidy here. Yeah. So how Mapcraft works is essentially each individual map sheet that we're rectifying and cropping through Map Warper is linked from this website here. So, for example, Galway City. If I click on that one, you'll see a link here to the Map Warper page. Uh, Dublin City Centre. There should be another one. It's not actually on that one. There's another one here, and so on. So it's the easiest way of finding the individual sheets. In addition, uh, I'll just click this Castlery one here, and I'll claim ownership. You claim ownership by clicking the top button up here, and say yes, you want to take this slice. And as well as that, we have a progress meter here. So you see the way some of these are green and yellow and various shades of orange and so on. So if I click the progress bar here, you'll see this changing as I slide this along. So one is just, it's added to map warper, no rectification is done yet. And then uh, three control points, uh, five, 10, 15, 20, 30, and you'll see the color changing there as I go along. Okay, so I know this sheet is already up on Map Warper, and I know there are three control points on it, so I'm just going to move it to the status of three. So the reason for doing this is to allow other people, when they're going looking for sheets, uh, to see what status they're at and to actually find those sheets on uh, Map Warper as well. So it's important that as you rectify sheets that you come back to Mapcraft and update the status of the sheets here. So I'll go to this one now, click on the link, and we'll go into Map Warper and start rectifying. So it pops open a new window here behind. And this is what you'll see when you go into Map Warper. So we've already done the cropping of the sheet, so now we're going to go into rectifying it. So I'll click on rectify here. There's three points already on this sheet, so just so as I can start from the beginning, I'm going to delete those three, so as you get an idea of what it's like to start this from the very beginning. So, if you come coming to a fresh sheet with no control points on it, this is when it can get very difficult, right at the very beginning, when you're trying to match up this sheet to a point in the world. So when you have a sheet loaded in with no control points, typically what you'll find is that on this side is basically located somewhere in the middle of the ocean. So this is the whole point with rectification. You're trying to say that this sheet is located at this point in space. So your first point, the first thing you need to do Let's go to the general area that you know the sheet is covering. Then very often what I try and look for is something like a river or a railway or 
a main road that's going to have been around for a long, long time. So if I zoom in here a small bit, what you can see up the top here, you can see the railway going along here. And in the previous video, I realigned that railway so that it's uh, correct to the imagery below. So the easiest thing uh, to do to get this sheet showing over here is the very first thing you have to do is put three control points on. So just starting out, um, I'm going to look for and see as the bridges. So if I come back over here, you can see that there's a road coming up here that intersects the railway at this point here, which will be this one coming up here. So what I'll do is I'll zoom in here. And I'll zoom in on this side. And on the OpenStreetMap side, before you place a control point, you want to zoom in as far as possible. And typically what might happen is the first three control points that you add, you may end up deleting those later on. So I've zoomed in here now and I can see straight away that this doesn't match this. But just to start out, I'm going to place, sorry actually, I'm looking at the wrong point here. That looks more like it. So I've got a bridge here and I've got a bridge over here. So what I'm going to do is click here to add control point and click on that bridge there and make sure I'm fully zoomed in on the OpenStreetMap side and click there as well and then just hit add control point. Then I need to click here uh, which is just basically allow you to pan the map around, basically drag and slide it around as you need. Then I zoom out a small bit over here and zoom out over here. And just add another point. Should be crossing yet. Yeah. So I can see there's a road coming along here that intersects that railway and has a kind of a kink in it which matches over here. So again I'm going to zoom in. On the OpenStreetMap side, I'm going to zoom to the absolute max as far as it will go. And over here, I'm going to zoom in as well. And again, click this option here to mark my control point here and here. So what I'm basically saying is this point on this sheet of paper corresponds to this point in the world. And then you add control point. Again, click off adding. And zoom back out. And there's another point at which this crosses. Yep, yeah, there's another junction here. So I have a road coming up here, and I have a road coming up here. So I'm basically going to zoom in and just add another control point here. There you go. So that's my first three done. So once you have three done, you need an absolute minimum of three to do this. You hit warp image down the bottom here. So what will happen is that starts rectifying the map. It should just take a second and then it will give you a zoomed out version of the map over on this side. And this is when it gets an awful lot easier to do the rectification. So there we go. So if I zoom out over on this side here, I'll just turn like that. So what you actually have over here now is you've this uh, uh, small menu here, and you can turn this sheet off and on. So you've it warped here, and you can change the visibility of it. It's so basically what that allows you to do. If I zoom out on this side here, just a little bit more. What I can do is I can zoom in down towards here, 
and increase the visibility of the map and see are there corresponding points on the OpenStreetMap layer and on the map sheet, which makes it much easier to actually tally up these points. Now, when you're making control points, you want to get a very even spread of control points. More or less, you can see your uh, grid squares here. You want to essentially treat those like markers. You want to get approximately 30 to 40 control points, a really good spread the whole way around, including a few along the edges of the map so that each map sheet lines up with the corresponding map sheets beside it. As well as that, because this is essentially a flat sheet of paper and what you're doing is you're dropping it on top of the surface of the earth and as you know the earth is curved but it's not a flat surface. So by dropping these control points at various locations around the sheet what you're doing is you're warping and stretching and uh, squeezing the sheet so that it conforms to the surface of the earth. So if I zoom back back in down here in this corner you'll see this R360 coming up here. I'll just let this load and you can see the corresponding R360 coming up here but you can see it's off by a good distance. So essentially what we're doing is we're going to be adding control points at various locations to basically bring the alignment of this in line with the OpenStreetMap layer underneath. And the more control points you put on it, the more accurate the sheet is. I have seen some sheets with 60 or 70 control points. That's fine. You can do that if you want. So it's not necessarily needed, but when you have a sheet covering uh, pretty much all ground, as in not along the coastline, you want to get at least 30 to 40 uh, control points. So you can see uh, you have your railway coming along here, you have your various roads coming up through it as well. But what you also have is your walls inside fields and your ditches and streams and rows of trees and so on. When you're selecting your control points, you want to try and get it as accurate as possible. So a couple of things to watch out for, as I mentioned in another video, is especially on main, main roads, which may have had roadworks and realignments done, you want to be careful that they line up on the old sheet to the current OpenStreetMap data. And what I mean by that is that there hasn't been, you know, a, a road works to remove a kink and a bend and you're trying to match the two up and the kink no longer exists. What I often do is look for, I'll just turn off this layer. I often look for old, older roads, which won't have, so basically your unclassified roads. I look for junctions in those and try and match up that junction with a junction on your sheet because very often they will not have undergone any kind of road work or realignment or anything to change them. So the way they will have been 60, 70, 100 years ago is exactly the way they are today. If you want to get even more accurate, you can go down to the level of on OpenStreetMap mapping out some of the walls and the fields and mapping, uh, adding your control points based on the wall on your sheet the wall in that you've mapped in OpenStreetMap. Now you can go to that level of detail. Many people do. Personally, for what we're using these for, I don't see a need for it, but by all means, if you wish to do it, you can. And I'm back. So that one was actually taking a bit longer than I'd planned. So uh, in the immortal words of Mary Fitzgerald, here's one I made earlier. This is a sheet for Curafin. And you can see here there are 61 control points on this one. And you can see there's a very even spread, a few along the edges, and plenty spread across the middle as well, which means this is a pretty accurate sheet. Uh, just one point on this, uh, the various colors of these control points. If I click this option here, and you'll see the full list of control points down here and the colors on the various markers. 
what these colors represent is basically uh, how accurate the control points match up. So when you add one control point on the sheet and a control point over on this side, it recalculates each time how accurate every single control point is based on each, in, each additional control point that you're adding. So for example, if I add a control point over here now, and I'll just I'll make, do, deliberately make sure this is not accurate, just to give you an idea. So I just click one here and deliberately put this one over here miles away. So what you'll see now is everything looks like it's wrong on this side of the sheet. So that gives you an idea when you're adding a point, the colors will change as you're adding your points based on how accurate uh, it, the new point is in relation to all the other points. So here's my point 62 down here, and here's my point 62 up here. So what I'm going to do now is press this option here, which allows me to refine the location of the points. So, for example, if I pull this one down, and it's close to 51, so if I pull it down towards here, you'll see, you should see all these starting to change colors. So a few have gone yellow. If I pull it down closer again. Couple more have gone yellow. And this actually this should bring a lot of them back into green and blue again. Yeah. So if you've added a point and you want to get rid of it as well, what you need to do is note the number on it, hit the control points option and simply scroll down the list. So that one that I added, I'm just going to delete it. Yes. There we go. So in terms of accuracy, what these different colors relate to is, as I mentioned, the errors. So this will give you an overall error uh, rating. So blue is 0 to 5, green is 5 to 10, and yellow I think relates to 10 to 15, and red then is anything above that. What you want to try and do is make make sure as many of your points as possible are green and blue. A small sprinkling of yellows is not a major issue, but if you're seeing an awful lot of yellows, then there's something obviously wrong. And if you're seeing any reds, those definitely need to be fixed or deleted and replaced altogether. For more information on mapping townlands in Ireland, uh, go to the OpenStreetMap wiki and search for mapping townlands. And on the search page, you will see a link to the main section and also to the uh, Townlands video series. On the Townlands video series section, you will find a summary for each episode, links to each individual episode, and also a list of links for any software or websites mentioned in each episode.